and welcome to the April CPAN Augusta Oncology Chapter virtual event. I'm Miriam Atkins. I'm a medical oncologist. I am the CPAN Medical Co-Chair and I'm the Vice President of the Community Oncology Alliance. Hi, and I'm Brenda McGar. I'm the CPAN Chapter Advocacy Leader for the Augusta Oncology Augusta Chapter, as well as the Oncology Nurse Navigator for Augusta Oncology. Thanks for joining us today. So today's agenda and educational goals, just a refresher, who is COA? What is CPAN? We're going to give you some updates from Augusta Oncology CPAN, uh, Chapter CPAN, and COA. We're going to discuss how advocacy has transformed during the pandemic. We'll mention COA's responses to the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges. We'll discuss some national oncology issues that are impacting patient care and some advocacy learning opportunities for this year. We just want you to know that cancer did not stop during the pandemic and neither did our advocacy. Who is COA and what is CPAN? The Community Oncology Alliance, or COA, our mission is to ensure that cancer patients receive quality, affordable cancer care in their own community. COA advocates nationally and in states for legislation and regulations that are consistent with this mission. And our CPAN Advocacy Network is a practice and patient advocacy division dedicated to fighting for policies and benefit patients and community oncology clinics. CPAN is different from other advocacy organizations. We advocate for the care exclusively and are non-cancer type specific. We are patients, survivors, caregivers, family members, oncologists, practice administrators, nurses, pharmacists, and many, many more. So in addition to CPAN's national advocacy presence, there are 28 CPAN chapters at the state level. There's Augusta Oncology, Broome Oncology, Carolina Blood and Cancer Care, and you can see the list on this slide. We're all over the United States. So CPAN has a decade of advocacy accomplishments. A sampling of our local and national impact are we've done meetings on Capitol Hill with state and federal policymakers. We have an annual conference dedicated and a dedicated two-day advocacy program track. Uh, last year we had a one-day track because of the pandemic but it was virtual and quite successful. There are multiple CPAN leadership opportunities CPAN is featured in national and local media, campaigns, and publications. State and practice-based educational events have been over 100 nationally. There are patient advocacy boards, and CPAN ensures that real people and their personal experiences are part of the community oncology policy discussion. CPAN advocates and survivors share dozens of personal stories. So our local CPAN, Augusta Oncology Chapter, launched on March 12th of 2015. So you see we've been active for more than six years now. We have advocated on Capitol Hill. We've taken trips to Washington, D.C. to do that. We've attended the national conferences. We have uh, been involved with national and local speaking and media roles. We've participated in local focus groups as well as virtual focus groups. And we've hosted practice-based educational events to keep you updated on current oncology issues. And that includes this event today. So how has advocacy transformed during the pandemic? The independent oncology practices have gone to extraordinary lengths to stay open and COVID-19 free. When hospitals were inundated with COVID-19 patients and still are in some areas, the nation's community oncology network has been a lifeline for cancer care. For instance, our office did not close and when some patients could not go to the hospital for treatment or scans, we were able to provide that care for them. Once again, cancer did not stop during the pandemic and neither did our advocacy. So COA continued and continues advocating for patients during the pandemic. Number one, oncologists nationwide requested approval to administer COVID-19 vaccines. We sent letters to governors and national leaders. At our practice, we uh, were not able to get the COVID-19 vaccine. However, there have been several areas in the state of Georgia who could administer a vaccines, but some of the practices in other states were able to get the vaccine to help with their patients. We lobbied for the expanded use of telehealth, and this has really helped patients. This is allowed for vert, visual and audio with a realistic reimbursement because before COVID-19, when we would call patients uh, to discuss certain things, there was no reimbursement for that. We pushed to stop for prior authorization during the pandemic. Uh, as patients, you come for your treatment. You have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. We have an entire staff who basically has to discuss and communicate with insurers all the time to ask and sometimes even beg to get your treatments approved. So we really push to stop for those kind of, um, I'll call them inhibitions to cancer care. We also push back on unsafe home infusion of cancer drugs. Some insurance companies wanted to have patients get the drugs at home. We feel it's not safe. 
We've had patients have severe reactions within 30 seconds of having an infusion, and that's just not safe for oncology care. So COVID's responses to the pandemic challenges also, we, la we launched COVID-19 practice resources. We continued strong uh, policy advocacy in DC. We stood up for patient support services. We began data collection and tracking projects. And also, as I mentioned, the vaccinations at community oncology practices is ongoing. We also still fighting against the pharmacy benefit managers. These are large corporations that claim to reduce the cost of prescription drugs. However, their business practices jeopardize patient health in which community oncology practices see every day. We also continue to discuss the 340B discount program. It was originally intended in 1992 to help small um, community hospitals help patients from falling through the cracks. However, it's become a huge virtual ATM for hospitals. They've taken this extra funding and not sheltered to help patients, but used it to line the pockets of CEOs and to big, build large buildings and also acquire practices. There have been clinic consolidations, sometimes benefited through, sometimes made it possible through 340B. We try to fight for this, we try to fight against that, and also there's white bagging and brown bagging. In case you don't know what that is, the brown bag is when the pharmacy or the insurance company sends the drug to the patient and they want the patient to bring it in. The white bagging is when they, they send the drug directly to us. We fight this every day because we've had patients who the drug was delivered to them and it sat on their porch in 100 degree heat for several days because the patient did not know the medicine was there. We don't know the safety of this. We don't know the efficacy of these medicines once they sat out in temperatures like that. And as far as white bragging, we're against that in our practice because we get the chemotherapy from our safe distributor and we mix it here. We know that it's mixed right away. We know that it's safe and secure, so we still continue to fight against white and brown bagging. So I'll let Brenda talk about some advocacy opportunities for this year. We've had a lot of great advocacy opportunities this year. We have a national summit coming up July 21st of this year. We would love for you to get involved in that and we'll share some more information shortly on how to become a member of SCOA and CPAN. If you've not already done that in the past, we would love for you to join us and then set aside that day for a, a great summit um, that of course will all be virtual so you'll be able to do that from your home. We also do monthly advocacy chat webinars and the next one of that is coming up. It's always the second Wednesday of the month. Next one for that is coming up on Wednesday, May 12th and that again can be um, be accessed virtually and we'd love for you to join for us for that as well. So additional ways to stay engaged with CPAN like we just discussed if you haven't already registered with CPAN please sign up with them so you'll get the CPAN newsletter and you'll be kept abreast of everything that's going on not only locally with your practices but at the DC level as well. Uh, you can always visit the website to learn more information and take action. One of my favorite things is share your story. So if you're a patient or a caregiver or uh, just involved somehow with someone with cancer, they want to hear your story. COA and CPAN care about you as an individual, and you never know how that story will impact and share uh, with someone else and help them feel better. Of course, you can always follow on social media as well. So again, share your story. Inspire others, educate others cancer patients, survivors, caregivers, they want to hear from you because they want to be able to share that with others as well. And who knows, you might see your picture on TV someday. So our, our big push this year is called Time to Screen. This is for detecting cancer early, it may save your life. During the pandemic, because hospitals were closed and many doctor's offices were closed, many patients did not get their screening mammograms, their colonoscopies, their pelvic exams, and pap smears. So this whole new push is called time to screen to get patients back in the screen and find these cancers early. If you find the cancer early, you can be cured and the treatment will be a lot less toxic and a lot less expensive. So you can safely be screened for cancer. Now the hospitals are safe. They uh, brought forth lots of precautions and safety measures. So it's very, very safe to go to the hospital now and to go to see your doctor. Thank you for joining our CPAN Augusta Oncology Advocacy event today. Please visit our website to learn more, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.